Ja, goedemiddag. Uh, weet u misschien wie Veo dan Martens is? Veo dan Martens? Een Belgische voetballer. Zeg maar helemaal niks. Schijven, politicus, wielrenner. Theo dan Martens? I don't know. Zoon van Wilfried Martens? Misschien een kunstenaar, ik weet het niet. Politicus? Ik kan het compleet niet understand. I don't, I don't understand, sorry. Een Belg. Nee, nee, dat weet ik niet. Martens was the chief arbitrator of the world in the 80s and 90s. Martens was born in 1845 in Parno, in today's Estonia. He became an orphan when he was nine. He was sent over to St. Petersburg, got his education there, uh, was trained in law and became a in the end, a professor of international at St. Petersburg University. When were the first Russian elections? When God put Eve in front of Adam and said, you may now choose your wife. He had no sense of humor. And whenever he tried to send that humor, it failed. On the other hand, he was very much to the point. Most colleagues agree that he was impeccably dressed, more or less on the reserve, on the defense all the time. And his background may have had to do with that. At the time, Estes, Finns and many other minor nations were bullied by Russia and other major powers. So, this is why Martens from day one felt very familiar with the position of the Dutch. Also being a small nation along the coastline, vulnerable to the power play of the mighty. He had many clashes during both conferences, also because in the Second Hague Peace Conference, for instance, he wanted to get things done. Apart from that, it is inhuman to use these in times of war. Therefore, I play against drones from the 21st century. Please raise your hand if you share this point of view. I'm artist, sculptor, uh, working uh, 30 years, a little bit more uh, as a sculptor. When I worked on his portrait, of course, uh, I used some old photos uh, of him uh, and uh, yeah, I studied his uh, biography. Uh, that was enough for me to understand his uh, character, uh, to make uh, uh, his image on the good way. Uh, just one more detail, uh, the uh, colon uh, of the, uh, for the bust was made uh, in Russia, in Ural, the special uh, Russian stone, Malachit. Uh, and uh, here in Peace Palace uh, you have uh, many uh, gifts from many countries. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, uh, interesting. Uh, many countries involved uh, 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 in the idea of uh, peace regulation. Mr. Martens was one of the first people to talk about international humanitarian law. And international humanitarian law means that you are allowed to fight wars, to start wars. But even if you're fighting, you have to take care of, for instance, the protection of innocent civilians. You have to take care of the protection of prisoners of war. You should take care of not too much collateral damage, as it is called, additional damage apart from the action of war. And what he did do is draft a text I think he was the first one to do so, and that text is now called the Martens Clause, and that was included in the preamble of the first Hague Peace Treaty, 1899, and it was next to that included as a formal article, an article in full, in the second Hague Peace Treaty, the one that was adopted in 1907. 
And Martens came up with the idea, why not ask Carnegie to help out that struggling permanent court of arbitration with a building that was not just meant to be a venue for cases, but also a venue for future peace conferences and a symbol, an icon of the idea of internationalism. Exactly that what the Peace Palace stands for in our day and age. This was his idea. The Martens Clause keeps surviving. It comes back time and again because we will always have new technologies, new weapons, new ways of fighting wars. As of now, for instance, we have the drones, these unmanned uh, small aircrafts. Uh, they are a new challenge to international warfare because you now can kill people without uh, having any risk yourself because you do it in an electronic way. Uh, etc. And should Martens live now, he would look at this way of fighting wars with his eyes and he would definitely come back with the conscience of mankind and also with his ideas on what should become international humanitarian law. Hello. Weet jij wie Theodor Martens is? Ja. Wie? Wie is dat dan? Dat is mijn naam.